You're taking to see your operation. Just watched episode seven of The Penguin, and I think I'm gonna go work on my golf swing. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. I want to know right away what your thoughts are of the Penguin Episode 7 Top Hat. In the comments down below, let me know. I read and reply to all of them and I love this show. Want to hear what you think of it and where it's going to go. Big shout out to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much for stopping by. It really means a lot to us. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We are looking to get to 4,000 subscribers. You trying to make a deal, Oz? First of all, they watch a movie called Top Hat with Fred Astaire gunning down other members. Is this foreshadowing Penguin's rise to kingpin status of Gotham taking down all of his adversaries? Probably yes. Will he wear, will he don the Top Hat? Don't know yet. I hope so. That would be fantastic. I suppose this episode was the shortest of the season. It flowed nicely. It started off with a flashback and we see the relationship with Oz Cobb and his mom but not just that his brothers finally make an appearance we got jack and we got benny and we saw their relationship and it wasn't tumultuous by any means whatsoever they kind of had a, a weird relationship i suppose like we see penguin obviously oz Cobb, obviously with his handicap but we also see that the brothers somewhat care about him i think they tease him a little bit on the side but they care a little bit about him and through this and through the brothers we see and meet finally rex calabresi we finally see the great rex calabresi the one that oz Cobb hails as the king of gotham who rolls up in his chariot and we see that chariot the gold cadillac and how he looks at it and he admires the rims similar to when we first meet Victor and Victor and his gang trying to steal the rims off of Penguin's car. We get more and more into the mindset of how Penguin is trying to emulate the life of Rex Calabresi. I stay here with Benny, man. I don't want you getting involved. And I really like that at the beginning we saw the relationship with Oz and his mom and how all he wants to be is with his mom. And his mom means everything to Oz Cobb. But when his brothers come in, the attention gets taken away from Oz and she focuses her attention on his brothers. And even though, and she even kind of seems a little annoyed with how they're acting, but then she reverts and she becomes a mom and she starts being playful with them. And Oz takes notice of this and he watches on. And in his mind, I think he thinks, he believes that he is the best thing for his mom and his brothers are needed for his mom. And that's gonna play out. The brothers and Oz are then told to leave, to scam, to go bring this black book to Rex Calabresi. And that's when we finally meet him. And Jack gives Rex the book in exchange for $50, in which we got a nice Duffel Dragon reference fantastic but we learn that jack doesn't really see eye to eye with rex calabresi he's not into the gangster life oz however idealizes still rex calabresi at such a young age he aspires almost to be him he recognizes that rex is a gangster but he recognizes the wealth that he accumulates and one thing with francis and oz as we see throughout this series is that wealth is a big big factor for them they want to look rich they want to live look the part of somebody that they're not they're a lower class and they want to look high class we see that with oz's tacky apartment in episode six when sal and sophia break into it they look around they're like this is very tacky he wants to show he wants to appear like he's better off than he is and his mom is very much the same we see that towards the end of this episode as well when she's in her ballroom gown we see this they want to be a class that they are not and they they're very much phony and you get that in real life too people that don't have the money like to pretend and show you that they have the money after that exchange they go into the sewers into the old trolley station where oz finds a token much like he does in episode five and he looks at it and they go in and they decide, decide to play a little game of hide and seek that we have oz taking out his brothers they play hide and seek they go down into the sewers and they know that oz can't climb down the ladder to get to them and in that moment he says screw this and he gets back up and they kind of say oh come on oz and he locks them in there of course it's raining at this point he locks them in he leaves he goes home his mom says where are they he lets his mom know that they want to go see a movie claiming it to be Beetlejuice, of course, Tim Burton, and Michael Keaton, Batman 1989, and Batman Returns, and Batman Returns also had the Penguin living in a sewer. I thought that was a neat little reference and much appreciated, of course. And as Oz and Francis watch Top Hat together, we see the rain pouring and we cut back to the sewer and the water dripping out and back to Oz looking out the window with an ominous look, a look of someone who's getting what they want, knowing what's going on, very, very manipulative, very aware of the situation of what he has done to his brothers. And we cut back and the water is flooding 
and flooding and flooding. And Oz Cobb gets to be alone with his mom. That's when we cut to present day and the lights are on. And it's all good and glorious until, of course, Oz notices when he gets home that his house has been broken into or his apartment's been broken into. He goes in and we see Victor beaten and battered on the floor, a chair knocked over. Clearly something went down with him and Francis. He was beaten, left for dead, possibly, possibly with a crowbar by Sophia, much like the Joker, of course. We talked about this last week. Oz lifts him up and says, you got to go get a gang, get a group together. We need an army. Go get them. And Vic leaves. And that's the last time we see him. That is the last time we see him in this episode. I think he's coming back. I think the mid-trailer season hints at that. I think he's coming back. For what purpose? What's going on? We don't know. We don't know what happened with him and his assailants. We don't know what happened at all. This is when Sal and his gang come in and they start beating the crap. Well, I say they. Sal starts beating the crap out of Oz with the golf club taken from Oz's faux apartment last week and he starts just like beating him down he's told he can't kill him Sophia wants Penguin alive Sophia wants Oz alive and he starts beating and beating him beating him down and Oz just says and Oz just takes it Oz takes it and later on the episode Francis says Oz is always two steps ahead and in this episode Oz is always two steps ahead Oz eventually decides to take Sal to his hideout in the deep underground, and that is where they go. Now we learn that Sophia has Francis in a room, not locked up, not chained up, just hanging out in the bedroom at Falcone Manor. She makes her breakfast. She walks in. They have a nice little heart-to-heart. And in this moment, this I love this. This showed us Francis and who Francis truly is. Francis can go toe-to-toe, head-to-head with Sophia Gigante, a.k.a. the Hangman, one of the most ruthless people in all of Gotham, and especially in this show. And she goes toe-to-toe. And Francis warns Sophia that Oz is going to put a bullet through her head. And kill Maroney. And she's right on half of that so far. And then Sophia turns the tables and starts talking about Oz's brothers, Francis's other sons. The ones that perish at the beginning of the episode. And that's when Francis has an episode of herself. And she starts to go back. And her Louis body takes over. And then she mentions how they're out in the rain without an umbrella. And Sophia sees all this. And she starts to see Francis in a new light. And it almost starts to break Sophia. Julian Rush is a character that no one can quite pinpoint on this show is he an original character most likely but does he have hidden aspects of characters within batman lore most likely also and this scene when he shows up she's like he informs her that her cousin's child saw something and is about to speak and that a psychiatrist that he knows got this information now we know that Reeves is talking to HBO about doing more shows and we know that the Reevesverse is going to be expanding all around right this is going to be a big epic series that's going to span the Batman movies and then HBO shows focusing primarily probably on villains. We know that the Arkham Asylum show was something that was nixed in the summer and parts of that show were you parts of that series were used in Penguin and other aspects maybe in Batman 2 and whatnot but that could also in my mind I was thinking we might be getting Harley Quinn. Is he is he referencing Dr. Harleen Quinzel? Never says it, obviously, but but I think, you know, when they add these little tidbits of information in these shows with these names here and there, they're leaving you little breadcrumbs, I think. Sometimes I think they're just leading you astray and giving you little nods, but I sometimes I think they're breadcrumbs, and they could be hinting at a Dr. Harleen Quinzel within the Reeves verse. I don't think she's going to appear on The Batman 2, don't get me wrong, but if we get other series on hbo there's a possibility that maybe she appears in um, in a show that might use aspects of what the arkham series was sophia tells julian that she will deal with gia later but she needs julian's help and julian is going to give francis cobb some light therapy treatment to try to get in her mind and find out what is really going to break oz cop sophia wants to hurt oz and he, she's going to use francis to get there she's going to get the information how to get to oz in there This episode, of course, being called Top Hat, really shows Oz's rise to the Penguin, rise to the big time. We get Oz in the sewers now, being held by Maroney and his gang at gunpoint, Maroney on the phone with Sophia, and then Oz starts getting him, starts hitting him where it hurts, talking about his wife and his son, and what they smelled like when they were burning, and what kind of shampoo or whatever Nadia was wearing, because the smell was distinctive, and that sets Maroney off, and just enough time for one of penguins gang members to shut the power to rip the power off the power goes off and oz escapes and maroney chases after him and then they have what was what looked like was going to be an epic showdown it looked like it was going to be an epic showdown 
<laughs> and then Maroney just dies. And Oz is so disappointed in that. He can't get over it. He keeps telling him, I beat you, I beat you, I beat you. And he can't get over that he didn't get to actually beat Maroney on his own. Maroney didn't die because of Oz. Maroney died because of his own health problems. And he went down. But it was very poignant to see when he took Maroney's ring off, placed it on his finger. And we go right back to episode one with Alberto wearing the ring, discussing the ring, and how Oz brought the ring back to Maroney in prison. And now the ring is with him. And it seems like this ring was Carmine's also. It was Maroney's and Carmine's, then Alberto's. And, you know, whoever holds this ring holds the power in Gotham. I thought a really important scene in this series was when Sophia approaches and visits Gia in the hospital. And she goes to visit her. And Gia's in there and she talks about how she saw a gas mask. And Sophia says, no, 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 it's not what you think. Uh, it was an accident. I had nothing to do with it. And then she notices that Gia's been cutting herself. And she's all cut. And Sophia goes up and she has a moment with her. That her mom and her dad were bad people and they deserve to die. And she thinks the world is a better place without them. Paraphrasing, of course. And Gia has this look on her face. But then when Sophia leaves the room, she's just taken aback. She's filled with emotion. But she doesn't have time to process the emotion because good old Oz Cobb decides to give her a phone call and says that he has the keys to the f***ing kingdom. And that is when it is game on. Or is it? Julian Rush approaches once more and Sophia says, and Sophia is now a little bit wishy-washy, right? She doesn't know if she can go through with it. She's realizing she's just become her father. She's become what her father wanted her to become. And she never wanted that. And now she's fell into this trap. It's her birthright, right? This is, this is who she is and she can't escape it. And she doesn't want this. And Julian now, completely off the rails at this point, I think, is like, what are you talking about? We need to get this. We are on a path. There is something bigger with Julian going on. He's like, we are on a path. What is with you, Sophia? Snap out of it. He says that her father's hand is no longer on her throat. It's not his destiny for her anymore. And then he says, what do you want? And she says, I want Oz to pay. I want, an, I want Oz to know what suffering is. And oh boy, <laughs> it was coming. I want Oz to feel pain. Real pain. Oz and Sophia agreed to meet and they're going to exchange Francis for the keys to the city. For everything Oz believes Sophia wants, he will trade in exchange for his mother. But again... Oz is always two steps ahead. So what is the real plan here of Oz Cobb? And now Sophia has a game to play of her own because she lets Penguin know that she might have been what he thought she was. She might have been two steps behind Oz and behind everybody else and not the hangman killer. But she was in Arkham for a decade. And what happens in Arkham doesn't stay in Arkham, especially not in this Gotham City. It comes out. And pain is going to be delivered on Penguin and everyone around Penguin. And when he goes up to that van, he thinks he's going to see his mom's body, his mother's dead body in there. That is what he believes is the worst. But instead, it's a bomb. It is a bomb. I know one person that could have taken care of that. With 18 seconds to go, Oz takes off. He doesn't tell anybody else. He just runs down the sewers, just heads off. Where base, I think where his brothers were killed is where we're going. And he goes down into the sewer. And now he has to go down that very ladder. He couldn't go down at the beginning of the episode. And he goes down and he falls. And it explodes. It just takes out Crown's Point. Just takes it out. Crown's Point is in rubble. Penguin awakens. We have a flashback with Oz and his mom. And they're dancing. And Oz wakes up. And he gets up. And he has to climb up the ladder, the very ladder that he had to descend to save his life that he couldn't do that ended up wiping out his brothers to the beginning of Oz becoming a monstrous man. And he goes up. And when he arrives out of the sewers, Penguin is born. This is it. Sophia, this is, this is, the, the line has been drawn. It's over. He thinks he sees Vic. It's not Vic. He looks around. Where is he? He's in all the rubble. All, everything that he knows has been destroyed now on top of being destroyed. And as Penguin emerges from the rubble, we see Detective Marcus Weiss come, who we saw earlier in the series, come and says that Sophia is waiting for him and knocks him out. And then we go back and we travel to Monroe's once again. 
This, of course, is a reference to an earlier episode also where Oz says that his fondest memories with his mother were dancing at a jazz club. Now it's called Monroe's, which is very interesting because that could be a reference to Calendar Girl or one that I am more hinting on. Catherine Monroe from the Court of Owls, of course, which is something that I believe this series is heading on that path for. I think Court of Owls are on their way, possibly also shh, Hush also, but I think Court of Owls is a guarantee in the bad verse. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's what I think. So Monroe's could be a little subtle nod, once again, the breadcrumb nod at the Court of Owls appearing in this universe. Same winners, same losers. But when New Sophia wants to see her, New Sophia wants to see her. She was conflicted, but now she's coming into her own and becoming the mobster that we're all hoping she'll be. But Penguin is going to be the mobster we all want him to be, but none of them are likable. Everybody in this series is god-awful, and I love it for it. That is episode 7 Top Hat of the Penguin. I really enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. Until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.